Hello, 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 YouTube. Brad Singleton coming to you live for an extended version of Five Minutes of Fire episode. Today, we're talking about how to leverage your financial freedom, how to leverage your tax check towards financial freedom. Now, I don't know if you're getting a tax refund this year or not. Uh, if you're not, this video might trigger you because you're like, hey, but I'm paying in taxes. I, um, I'd love to get a, uh, <laughs> I would love to get a tax refund. Well, whether you you are or you're not, the principles that we're going to be talking about today apply towards um, when you get extra money um, in, in any kind of extra money. Okay, and it's important that that we uh, we understand this, the the understand these principles. Okay. Whenever we get money, we can we can do one of three things with it. Okay, we can spend it, we can invest, and we can give. Okay, we tend to do we we always do one of three things. Now, the place that we tend to go first, our most logical place that we always go to is right here, spending. Okay, that's what we always tend to think of first is how can I spend this on myself? Get what I want. Okay, so most people tend to be spenders. We, You probably do have some people that are savers and they, they don't want to spend anything on themselves. They just they just want to they save every single penny. That's possible. I think most people are spenders. Um, so we just get what we want now. That's why most people are in debt. Most people have some type of of debt, whether that be a car loan, be student loan, be credit cards, whether they have almost, you know, a mortgage, we all have debt. And because we want something now, and we said we're willing to pay for it later for what we want now. So when we get extra money, um, we tend to think, well, what can I do with it right now here in this moment? Okay, how can I get what I want right now? But I'm going to challenge you, if you really want financial freedom, you're going to have to think about these other options. Okay. You're going to have to think about investing. That's, that's a big, big important piece. Okay. So there's lots of different ways that you can invest when you get extra money. But the first thing I'm going to challenge you to think about when you do get quote unquote extra money, whether that be through a tax check or who knows, whatever, I'm going to challenge you to, to slow down and to hold off on spending. And I want you to think about how can I take at least a portion of this, and depending on where your financial situation is, you may, may, may need to take a very significant portion of that into investing. Okay. The first thing I want to challenge you to think about when it comes to investing would be paying down debt, getting out of debt, getting out of credit card debt, paying off your cars, paying off student loans, getting out of consumer debt. For someone who has been in a place for many, many years of having zero consumer debt, it's a very freeing place to live from. It's a very freeing place. I want you to experience financial freedom. But the only way you experience financial freedom is by making really hard choices. Okay, because when that tax check comes in, okay, and you may be looking at hundreds, you may be looking at thousands. I don't know what how big of a portion it is. And you're like, sweet, I can do go do all kinds of fun stuff. Okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go, I'm gonna go buy a motorcycle. I'm gonna go get a tattoo. I'm gonna buy a car. I'm gonna go buy some new weightlifting equipment. I'm gonna buy some water skis. I don't know what you're thinking, but you're thinking, fun, of course. And then what do we do? We we spend all that money and then we go right back to where we've been living in scarcity and and trying to pay off debt not having enough to pay the bills. And then we, it seems like we live 99% of our life in scarcity, in bondage, because we don't have the discipline that when that extra money comes in to say, all right, how can I invest this? Because that, that's a muscle that we have to learn how to flex when that, when that money comes in to go, oh, wait a minute, I've been wanting to get out of debt forever. And now this money has come in. Maybe I should take most of it and invest it, pay down debt. Maybe you're in the unique situation where you don't have consumer debt. So for me, when I get extra money, I'm thinking, how can I pay down my mortgage? Because I want to, I want to have a paid off house. I've been able to live in that place once in my life. It was a pretty exciting place. When you have zero debt, when you have zero payments to anybody, 
That's a pretty exciting place to live. And so if you're not there, I want you to begin to dream of what that could look like. What could it look like for you to live with no debt? Imagine not having a credit card payment. Imagine not having a student loan payment. Imagine how free it would be not to have a car payment or any of those payments. What could your life look like? Imagine that, that how stress, how stress-free your life could be without consciously worrying about if you're going to have enough money to pay the bills. How different could your like life look if you chose when that extra money comes in to flex that muscle of okay. I'm going to do the responsible thing here and I'm going to pay down debt or I'm going to put it in savings or I'm going to invest in, in retirement. I'm going to I'm going to invest this money. Now, I'll be straight up honest with you. I've made those choices and decisions so many times <laughs> and it's exciting for about three seconds. It's exciting for about three seconds to pay off debt, to save it. <laughs> it's not near as sexy is going out and buy, buying the water skis or the new guitar or the tattoo or the whatever. That's way more exciting. See, now here's the interesting thing, though, is that spending is much more exciting in the moment, but not near as exciting in the long term. Where investing isn't near as sexy or exciting in the short term as it is in the long term. It has short term price, but long term benefits. Spending has a short term excitement, but long term benefits. So I want to challenge you with those, with those, with that thinking. All right, what am I going to do with this money? Am I going to spend it or am I going to invest it? Okay, so we talked about investing. Let's come back here to spending here for just a minute. I'm going to challenge you that when you do get extra money, that you should spend some of it. You shouldn't give it all. You shouldn't invest it all. That you should spend some of it because we're talking about financial freedom. And if, if when you get money, if all you do is invest and all you do is give, then you're still actually in, in bondage because you don't know how to actually enjoy that money in the moment. Because there is a small percentage of us that tends to be savers, that we want to save it all. Guess what? If you want to save all of your money, you're still operating from a scarcity mentality, just like the person who wants to spend all their money or give all their money. You're still operating from a scarcity mentality. Abundance mentality says, I'm going to spend some, I'm going to invest some, and I'm going to give some. Those are three things that you need to be doing with your money at all times. You should spend some of it. You should invest some of it, and you should give some of it. So when it comes back to spending, I'm talking about spending, not wasting. Now, that's a big point. Because, again, when it comes back to my conversation with my friend this morning, I said, you know what? When it comes to spending, I would challenge you to think about some ways that you could spend that money that would actually be – would actually create a memory with your family. What if you took your family on a dream vacation with that money? I think that'd be a really wise way for you to spend that money. Why? Because you're creating memories with your kids that they'll never forget. I don't think that's necessarily a selfish way to spend the money. I think you are giving your kids a gift when you say, we're going to go on an adventure. We're going to do something we've never done before. I don't think that's wasteful at all. There's lots of ways that we can waste our money. But when we're actually investing in experiences for our kids or maybe experiences for ourselves, I think that's a really wise way to spend your money. Okay, so we talked about spending. We talked about investing. Now let's talk about giving. Okay, so now I'm teaching you today from a Christian worldview. You may not be a Christian. You may not be a religious person at all. But I want to challenge you that this principle of giving still applies to you, whether you're religious or not. Because we're talking about how to have financial freedom in our lives. OK, financial freedom means that we're not bound in scarcity. We're not bound in scarcity when it comes to all three of these quadrants, whether it's spending, whether it's investing or whether it's giving. We're not bound by scarcity. Scarcity says there's only so much to go around. Abundance says I can always create more. So when it comes to this, that's why giving is so important because a scarcity mentality always operates out of fear. Abundance does not. Abundance operates out of faith. And so I'm, I'm just guessing that if I, I don't even know who you are, but if I were to ask you, if, do you want to be known as a greedy person or a, as a generous person? I would guess with just about 99.9% .9 certainty that you're going to say, I want to be known as a generous person. I don't think that anybody wants to be greedy. 
But what's interesting, though, even though that's an aspiration that we have, it's not always something that we act out, especially when we get extra money, like a, like a tax check. When we get it, we're not thinking about how we can give necessarily. Most of us probably aren't. We're thinking about how can I spend or maybe how can I pay down debt? How can I benefit from this money? That's very normal, very natural. But if that's all we do with money is spend it or invest it, we're still being incredibly greedy, aren't we? If giving is never a thought, we're not really being generous, are we? We're not really operating in financial freedom. And that's what we all operate in. So I want to challenge you that whenever you do get extra money to set aside a portion of it to give. Again, whether you're religious or not. If you are religious, then I would challenge you to give that to your church. If you're not religious, then give it to some type of charitable organization that matters to you. But what matters the most is, is that you are training yourself. Generosity is like a muscle. It's a muscle that you have to continually train because we will just always drift towards greed. We will. It's just that it's just human nature. We have to work our way out of it. If you want to be known as a generous person, then you're going to have to do generous types of things. So when you get extra money, I want to challenge you to set aside a portion of it and not a teeny tiny portion. OK, if you get a thousand dollars and you give away 20, you're not really flexing a muscle of generosity. OK, that doesn't sting. That doesn't hurt at all. That doesn't take any any discipline. You get a thousand, you give away 20. I'm going to challenge you to take a significant portion of it, okay? So significant, I'm talking about maybe even 10%. Now, on the surface, 10% doesn't sound like a lot until it comes down to the real deal, doesn't it? You get $1,000 and all of a sudden you're going to give away 100 of it. That $100 bill seems like a lot to give away. You get $10,000, you are going to give away $1,000. Woo, $1,000 feels like a lot, doesn't it? But again, I'm challenging you to exercise to flex, to train that muscle of generosity. Why? Because what are we talking about today? Today, we're talking about how to have financial freedom. And one of the aspects of financial freedom is that you're actually free of greed. The other, other steps that we're talking about when it comes to spending or investing is freeing your mind from scarcity. But scarcity also operates in greed because it's a different analogy. See, when it comes to scarcity, we're looking at this like it's a cake. And if I cut out a piece of this cake and I give it to you, well, then I've got less cake for myself to enjoy. That's the, that's the way we look at scarcity. But when it comes to abundance, it's like I have a lit candle. Your candle isn't lit. I'm sharing my light with you. I'm lighting your candle. It doesn't diminish my, me in any way. That's, a, that's an abundant mentality, not a scarcity mentality. So I'm going to challenge you with this thought today. So when you do get extra money, I'm going to challenge you to do all three things, okay? I want you to spend some of it. I want you to enjoy it. I want you to invest some of it. And I'm going to challenge you to give some of it as well. Now, it depends on what your financial situation is, what kind of percentages that we're talking about, okay? It depends on where you're at. If you are deeply in debt, I'm going to challenge you to invest the major portion of that. If you're deeply in debt, I would challenge you to take 80% of that money and put it in the investment category. If you're deeply in debt, take 80% of that money and pay down debt. And then take 10% and give and 10% and spend. Okay? If, if, you're, if that's not where you're at, you're out of debt. Okay? You're in a different situation. Maybe you're not deeply in debt. Well, then I'm going to challenge you to, to change that. Okay? To maybe take 80% and put it over here in the spend category. Invest 10% and give 10%. Or maybe you, you have a really exciting opportunity and you're going to do a third. You're going to do a third and spend, a third invest, and third and give. I don't know what your percentages are. It really depends on what your financial situation are, what your goals. Okay. Do you have generosity goals? Do you have investing goals? Or are you the type of person that just wants to hang on to every penny and maybe you should spend a significant portion of it for you? Because Putting, doing 100% of any one of these three things isn't necessarily healthy. We need to be doing all three things all at the same time. Well, guys, thank you so much for joining me today. I hope that you, you hope this has been helpful to you. I hope that you share this um, uh, with people. And uh, thanks so much for joining me today for this extended session today on how you can take your tax check or extra money 
towards financial freedom. Thanks guys so much. Thanks for joining me today.